So a super quick introduction to design tokens. Basically, you have might have seen that kind of visualization before where you have a hex value at the very top. You give it a name like orange 400, and that gives it some meaning, but it's not really semantic. It's rather, it shows you that this is an orange color in the scale of 400. And with design tokens, the goal is to have various references in place. You could effectively create these um, relations between orange 400 and the next one, which is called CTA background color. And by doing that, we can create this very flexible UI that allows us to um, set semantic decisions on our choices on our design decisions. So we can make a change to this specific component without having to change everything that was using orange 400. And that is especially relevant when we are talking about light and dark mode where a uh, color such as white or gray 100 might be the background in light mode and in dark mode, it would be the inverse. But then you have examples such as uh, tooltips or other white elements in certain colors that just don't need to change. You don't want to have these be black. You want this to stay white. So by using these semantic references, we can do that. And the other thing that design tokens really allow you to do is to store these design decisions in a platform agnostic format. And what we mean by that is, is a JSON file, which is code that we can read and that kind of consumes our design decisions. And that way we can run all these automations that would have, that would mean we can transform that to CSS variables, to a, an Android file or some other output that we might require. But effectively that's what design tokens are. So we have these multiple levels of core tokens, which is this orange 400. We have a alias token. Sometimes they are all called a bit differently, but we have these multiple levels. You can go very deep component level tokens as well but the complexity rises with these kind of tokens. Usually you can just stay here and it would be fine. Um, I usually go up to this level um, so I can have these theming advantages. A quick demo of what we can do with the plugin is let's view a few examples that I have here. So this would be a design system that I have created where like a UI kit that I've created where we have multiple themes set up. We have a lot of tokens here. So that is the plugin um, showing me all these design decisions that I have here. Um, and these would be the core tokens, like the choices that I can make. But then I also have like semantic decisions such as background, surface, accent, disabled, accent default, foreground, default, etc. So these kind of imply meaning to me. So by looking at this, I'm able to understand um, the canvas color is this dark one. The foreground default color is this white one and so forth. So I can understand what decisions have been applied where. And with the plugin, what we can do is we can, let's see if I got that right, I do. We can effectively create different sets, which are the things on the left side and make and kind of sw swap out our decisions. So if I go from this dark one to a light one, you will notice these things change, like the values that you see here. And that's cause we are kind of replacing previous decisions. So if I go from the dark to the light theme, what you should see is a change of everything. So everything changes to this very um, light mode. And the same could be true for the high contrast one. So going from the light one to the high contrast one, everything would change as well. And I suddenly have a completely different UI. 